and welcome to the first episode of ECL Radio. Let's get to know the people on the show who you'll see over the next 10 game weeks of ECL football. So, first off, we're going to start with myself. I'm a Premiership winner with Sonny FC. I've also won the ECL Cup with Sonny FC. Probably the best manager in ECL history. Uh, the best coach in this ECL history. The best referee in ECL history. The best player in ECL history. Margo, what have you got to say about yourself? Right, so I am John Swift now. Um, I've won the Premiership, ECL Cup, and not Division 2, RIP. Yeah, one ball, what's your career been like? A uh, mix of up and downs. Started, uh, damn, my lowest career is obviously staying at Stony. Yeah. Um, and now the highlight is benching at Croydon. Uh, so, Ozzy, you've had a very long career. What's it been like? Uh, I am John Smith, uh, Yeah, right? I've, I've had a great career sitting on the bench of an illustrious lock team which lost in the playoff final. However, uh, you did get an assist from a throw-in one I, time. I did get an assist from a throw-in, which is arguably the greatest throw-in assist since Rory the Lap. So, really, I think my career's been illustrious and then recently I've basically done Matt's job in refereeing for the last few weeks. That's been really fun. Uh, new ECL Lou book are, by the way, available for purchase in all good bookstores, including WH Smith. Uh, right, so, we do have quite a few questions. Uh, but we're doing all right for them. I'll tell you what, I'm going to have a look on the ECL TV Discord before anything else. We, we do have a special guest today. Uh, by the way, Elias, if you'd like to say hello. Hey, 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 what's up, what's up? Hello. Uh, he'll be on later, as he's going to interview him. So, questions for the radio show there's only one radio show and it's ECL radio uh, so we have a question from Margot thoughts on the player final decision to take away the opening goal by a very big hard man if I speak I'm in trouble and I do not want to be in trouble <laughs> speak anyway it's, it's our radio show you can say what you like ok right fair enough it's it's a chat shit about Wait, yeah, okay, so um, it was a fucking awful decision. So bad that Ozzy even wrote a new rule into it to stop it happening again. Uh, excommunicate him from the Catholic Church ASAP um, and support local. Support local. Uh, we've got a question for everyone here, but I'm going to tell... Um, I'm going to get Marlow to answer it, and then myself, and then maybe Ozzy if he wants to. Uh, this is from Steve Bruce, biggest overachiever and underachiever in... I suppose every league. Well, well each it's... division? Yeah, I'm going to go with the biggest overachiever for um, for Division 1. I'm going, to say for, I'm going to say for the Premiership, it's probably Sonning FC, because we were tipped for relegation uh, last season in one league. Simple as that. Uh, underachiever for Premiership, Brom, we have to be disappointed with their season. They were expecting um, top three, and then they just collapsed. Uh, Margo, what are you looking for Div 2? Uh, Division 2, biggest overachievers. Um, there weren't really any overachievers in Division 2. I think the top three were as you would probably expect it. I think probably lot given where they were after five game weeks, but even then, it wasn't really expected that it, that it would go any other way. Um, Division 2 kind of went how you'd, you would imagine it would. I suppose biggest underachievers... Paddington didn't have a squad, so it's not really surprising they went straight down. Um, I don't know. There's not really anyone in Division 2 over or underachieved. I suppose you could say um, probably Birmingham coming up from the playoffs in Div 3. And then, um, but then they were always going to do well because yeah, they had that, a was a, that was a mental squad, yeah. And Zaza is also one of the best players in ECL. And he I was suppose Mason had finished third. That was quite a shock. Because they had minus 32 goal difference. That, that made me say just towards the end of the season. Active for the playoffs. Did all right in the playoffs. Got beat by Wolf. But they were all right in the first game. Um, I mean, I guess North Preston did underachieve. But that's only because they all left after like... Four yeah, they, they would have been fine, I suppose. Um, but I don't know why they left. They yeah, had one win under the belt, but they looked all right. North Preston were the team who provided Birmingham with the goalkeeper who saved them in the um, playoffs. And when they played against Westminster, Westminster found them very hard to break down. I think they only ended up scoring twice against them. Yeah, um, from Pazans, and I'll be disappointed we're getting relegated. It's such a historic club that in ECL, uh, one of the oldest about. But it would have been even worse to see 
Och United getting relegated after that. They pushed for the playoffs, which ended in disaster, not due to their own fault. Well, it was due to their own fault, but uh, not directly. Ron, but what do you reckon for a local league or Aussie, either of you answer this? Over the sheet of it, under the sheet of it. I don't really know much about the local league, so I really have an idea. Uh, Aussie, do you have an idea? I mean, I think you look at the, the playoffs and you go Eastbrook going up when they didn't really do anything until the playoffs. Um, especially because East Riding had quite a good end to the season. Because, I mean, they beat us at Lock in the Cup, which I think was partly my fault for fouling someone completely unnecessarily um, towards the end. But other than that, I mean, I think Maylands had a good season, but no one really underachieved at that level because I some mean, of the games are just hoofball. And you can't I'd, really say anyone over or underachieves. I'd say East Riding did underachieve, given that they had players like Samu and Nedison in their squad, and they didn't end up getting promoted. Yeah, mm. I, su- I suppose Maylands and Eastbrook would be your main overachievers, and then underachievers. Ooh. Yeah, East Riding. Yeah, yeah. definitely East Riding. But uh, that concludes that question. Let's go on to the next one uh, this one comes from Imagine I'm going to give this one to Margo what's the most underrated team in any league um, most underrated team in any league well it's going to be one of the Division 3 sides probably Marlborough because no one really talks about them as being one of the big teams in the local league it's all been about Harlech and Halewood in pre-season with East Riding every now and then getting a mention but I mean all their players have now gone to Division 1 so Unlikely they'll do anything. But Marlborough finished last season very, very strongly with two wins, one of which I think they beat Rams get like, what, 10 nil or something? Six, no, 6 1. Oh, was it only 6? I come, yeah, and I come and see to that game. That's poor. Um, so, Marlborough did really pick up at the end of last season, and I would be surprised if they didn't make top two in Division 3 this season. Yeah. Next question, I'm going to ask one more this one. How does Sonning from last season and all the team that won the cup in season seven rank with all the title and cup winners in ECL? Uh, uh, that's for all of us, but I'm going to give us a one ball. Well, obviously, was it when you won the cup, we had a more of like a hoof like mentality, and then obviously, I moved this season or last season, and then your play style went for more passing around, but it still was a bit of hoof ball. Yeah, I, I suppose that, that's actually quite an interesting. It did help with it. the few auto wins, obviously, but yeah, you can look at the progress that you made from the couple of seasons ago and see the progress that you've made at the team. Yeah, I suppose when you when you talk about hoofball and shit like that, then you're going on about basically what every team does in ECL. Yeah, that's basically how you, teams basically play now, apart from obviously Croydon, who like to try and play it around. Cruising trying to play at the back, but they still keep yeah. it up. That's just in teams' mentalities. It doesn't matter where, yeah. wherever you go in the world, there will be who's I mean, for me, I think it's because like, with this season's tools, it doesn't really encourage it as much as it did with last season's. Obviously, mm-hmm. you know, still got to fix them, um, yeah. and so is Alf. But I think it does encourage it because, like, the way the, the power's set this year and the t- t- control, it should hope, well, hopefully, encourage a different style of play to everyone playing the same way. Yeah, that's what I've noticed with the new tools. It's more passing and moving, with especially with that side pass now additional added. Yeah, I'll think... actually be able to hit the ball. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Other than that, though, I mean, I think they, it will encourage a different style of play this year. Because, um, I mean, hopefully the reactor will get fixed and we'll see a better way of it working. But I think in general, it's going to be a, a lot more passing and moving like South Croydon have played for a bit longer than a lot of the other teams. Yeah. I suppose that, um, we're getting back onto the question, where do you reckon you rank? One, but... Um... Alongside teams like Salford and Bromley and South Cruz and that have dominated them. Uh, well, well, think back to the FC Victoria as well, with uh, especially Will Killer in the side and Dino and Elias partnering up. That was a, a proper, proper side. That, how do you think you rank alongside it? Yeah, and the way that you've built Sonning over the last couple of seasons, like from where it was when it was made, like we didn't really have high expectations for ourselves. No. And we went on to win the cup. And obviously last season you went on to win the league. So it just shows that anyone can win it. 
it just all depends on how you run it. Yeah, I, I said um, I think I said two seasons when we first took over the club that I want this to win at Sophie and get second, and we did. Yeah, well, we came but close, it, didn't we? We yeah. just lost on like, the final day or whatever it was. Yeah, that that was very unlucky. Um, but we had um, we had the brilliant CCL Cup final where I fuck on Manchester City at home, so I didn't come to half of it. <laughs> uh, I think I made it back in like the 88th minute and just saw fucking one man. What's going to be good in the entire game? Being like, lucky. <laughs> it's what, <laughs> uh, what's fucking one boys a bang one in from 25 yards and everyone goes mental. That was yeah, just. I remember in the voice chat going, there's everyone shouting for me to cross it into Marlow, I think it was. Yeah. And I thought, fuck it, I'm just going to go for the shot. And look, it just went away. And then we ended up playing nine minutes of added time when we scored yeah. about three <laughs> minutes into four minutes. That was absolutely mental. Uh, question from Philip Niame. <laughs> um, question for all. Uh, what's your favourite kit from left? We're going to start with Margot for this one because he's an experience at these kits. Right, well, in the least biased way possible, the best home kit was Sonning's. Um, 100%. Like, not even close. <laughs> yeah. Um, away kit. I can't... I feel like Marlboro had a really nice one, but I can't remember. I think they had, like, a black and orange. Yeah, that was, like, was really nice. It was, like, black and white. Amazing. I just... Sort of... But a black, white, and orange, I think it was. Yeah. That was really good as well. And I remember... Who was it? Was it, um... So I think it was amazing as it was a really nice home kit. It barely got used. Well, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> sadly enough. Uh, Ram no, Taylor was the worst. did get used. Actually, that's a good question. What's the worst, what's the worst kit? Ramsgate. Yeah, mm. fucking toothpaste. Yeah. <laughs> Ozzy, what do you reckon? I mean, I, was, I don't really give that much. I liked Luff's sort of story and that Morgan got bored a lot and just kept deciding to change the kit and the identity of the club. I think that was the best part of the season other than the playoff run because he just got bored and there was like no actual con- continuity to any kits in it. Well, I mean, the I'd fact like that the club still is down as RB Lock on the spreadsheet tells you all yeah. you need to know. That, that's, why, that's why it was my like, favourite kit because you were like, every, every week we'd turn up and we'd be like, what is Morgan going to make us wear this week? Yeah, just, um, what, what rags have we got prepared this time? Yeah. Um, whereas all the other clubs were like, yeah, there's an identity there. Like, we're going to wear the same kit the whole season. Morgan would do, like, three weeks and then go, you know what? We're going to become a Red Bull club and change our colours entirely. And you're like, oh, OK. Yeah, fair enough. So we're going to decide best home kit. Uh, Sonning FC, best away kit, probably. Uh, whatever the Marlboro one was. That Marlboro <laughs> said was quite nice. Uh we're going to go on to the next question. Uh, Sean Lewick says, shite show, so is yours, fuck off. <laughs> uh, we've got Clash Colossal in the questions chat, asking about next season when we ask for questions about last season. You don't get the fucking show. Uh, well, we've got something to talk about next week at least. Yeah, mm. uh, Fepal asked a very good question here. Uh, what's the, this is for all. What's the most exciting game of the season, excluding the playoffs? And you're just in the cup. Ooh. I'm going to give us an Aussie. I, I, I like excluding the playoffs, because obviously the Div 2 playoff final was probably game of the year for all of us involved because of our comeback, the goal being this allowed. Um, I mean, favourite one I think I was in, involved in was, despite losing, was when we played, I think, East Riding in the Cup, which ended up being like 6-5 having a load of lead changes, some un- completely unnecessary fouls, and us sending the keeper up to the last minute and then just everyone missing the ball. Um, <laughs> so I think that was my favourite one uh, to be involved in, at least. I would say, um, in terms of most exciting, it was probably one of the National League games. I remember uh, it, was quite, it was quite a good um, Birmingham has a few decent games. Like uh, sometimes they just fucking dominate teams and put ten past them, but um, they get close because of the keeper, and that was what made it like really on edge. The three-two like, three with Lock United was a really good one as well. 
because it's one of those games which had it all, like just like the playoff finals. Yeah, lots of Birmingham in the league it was controversial because Alf gave them a goal which didn't go in and ruled out our goal which did, um, which meant that a game that could have been three two the other way ended up going three two to them, and there was very much potential for a comeback. There was a goal disallowed with literally the last kick of the game. It was one of those games which has it all. And we didn't really have many of those because there was a lot of very clear winners in last season's games. However, obviously, exclu- that's when you exclude the playoffs and cup because there were some very good games in those. Yeah, and you talk about certain sides being boring to watch, but you look at a few of the signing games, yeah. 12-3. Uh, 5-5 with Gilsey was a lot of shite, but it was quite a good game. It's a shame it was neutral. Uh Game week three, I remember uh, that 2 0 last minute winner from Margo uh, against Bramway away, and then um, we had South Croydon Salford, which ended 2 2. That was a very good game. Well, South Croydon Salford also ended 6 5 as well in the yeah. other. I remember, I remember Bramway girls, we played each other in, uh, I'm not saying this, but uh, pre season. They, they had quite a good game and they repeated it during the actual season. 3 uh, 2 to girls, we ended. And uh, Beckenham way. So, there, there were some very good games in the Premiership, but I think the local league really shines when you have uh, results from anywhere from fucking 12 3 to 1 0 on the last day. <laughs> it, it go, it, you'd have some of them where it's pissing 11. But then there's actual tight quite games between the, the title contenders. Remember, we had Birmingham North Preston in season 7, I think. It and it was a proper good game, like genuinely brilliant to watch. Because it was after Jesse, there was a banging atmosphere. I think it was like 8 o'clock kickoff. So it was a night game. And all oh, it was Monday night football, I remember. And it was 8 o'clock kickoff. Absolutely brilliant. But yeah, you talk about like, exciting games. It's all about the atmosphere these days, especially in cup matches. Like, I mean, we've seen a few shocks as well. I'm not going to talk about one of them. It was in the semi finals. I think you can guess which one that is. Uh, but remember me. No, I've got a clue what you mean, mate. No, yeah, no, no one to to be honest. Shut up. <laughs> I remember Bad Marlo, Marlo going and going in a one-one draw with Sussex because uh, we had news about, so we were definitely the favourites for that. Uh, we are uh, Maylands taking the lead against Salford and then dropping four goals. Uh, Bromley two, Birmingham Athletic five. It wasn't really that big of a shock because everybody knew that Birmingham were going to be a better side there. But it was still a really good game, especially to ref. Uh, trophy dead as usual because Div 2 versus Div 3 is normally just teams getting battered. Um, but yeah, there were some genuinely close and exciting games. Very good question, Vepal. Uh, Alright, let's see. Uh, I am not going to answer that question from It's the Game Player asking if maybe the will stay up just a bit. Who's the most overrated player in the ECL? Uh, Marlo. Is that your answer or are you asking me I mean, to speak? I, 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 no, I'm, I'm asking, asking you to speak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've, we've answered that one. Cheers, uh, everyone, for listening. Uh, <laughs> I mean, if we talk about in ECL, I can't really say Zantaro anymore. Huh? Um, uh, <laughs> well, it's going to be one of the old G-Flick boys. Um, Months ago, I mean, he's <laughs> not really it, overrated anymore. He used to be, but now I think yeah, and everyone's he's realized, lost his reputation. Holy shit! Because he played two halves against Westminster and got subbed off and banned. <laughs> it's what. No. Um, sorry, but uh, carrying on. Um, we well, are yeah, yeah. It's probably just Pierre and Zentoro. Zentoro's like the Dwight girl of ECL. He can score fairly long shots in Div 2, but he can't... I'm going to be honest. Coach. I'm going through the ECL Discord just trying to think, is this player overrated or not? <laughs> I feel like it's got to be one of the boys who keeps jump. Oh, wait, I know the answer. It's from Zento. Never mind. There we go. <laughs> oh, well, I didn't hear him. I not agree. Because he's good. He is good, but he's just a dribble merchant. And last season, when you actually had to pass the ball every now and then... It just didn't work. Like if you remember when they played against us in one of the first games of the season, I think we ended up with a clean sheet and a 2 0 win or something. And literally, he would just try all these clever back heel passes without any of them actually making it through to the man. And you could just run up to him and tackle him. Yeah. 
Mm. It was fantastic to just back off and wait for them to come towards you with a G flick. And then okay, just you couldn't do that when Zentoro was against you in the ECL Cup semi, could you? Uh, right, sorry. No. <laughs> <laughs> easy, Marla, easy. Uh, next question. Which player has made a... Never mind, he asked a similar question before, but I can't even make sense of that. <laughs> uh, what, what team has made the most impro- the best improvement from season 7 to season 8, I'll say? Because that's what he asked before. Season text, 7 was way. so long ago. <laughs> I would say... Um, probably so uh, like... I say it in Sonning FC, no. I would say Sonning. Um. I'd say, um, uh, say, oh no, actually Westminster, because they stepped up a proper yeah. level last season. What, yeah, in the ball, especially, like, especially in defence, they were a lot more solid and consistent, and it just passed all, all down the park. Especially Duke, Duke trends completely better. changed them. Yeah, Duke's probably the most improved by it. Uh, we've seen some in Div Three come up. You couldn't really say for them though. They're just coming up through the playoffs and champions, that was an easy championship to win. But. Um, some of the players coming up from different initiative two did really well, uh, and we're expecting a few of the East Island players to do well for signing as well as um, well. Conceding the outcome as uh, uh, Westminster for next season. I'm not sure we're expecting them to do well. We're expecting them to play. But that's it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got fucking friends up front, haven't we? So you can always trust. Oh God. Yeah, and the best one who we had was Nedison. He left. <laughs> uh, what was the most crucial pu- piece in the puzzle? In Westminster's invincible league win after Boston in the playoffs two times. Morgan not be able to score an own goal to get lock level. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. if he managed to bang it into his own net, they, then the 100% record goes in the bin right at the end. Sadly, though, he missed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then the, the shot from the corner at the end of the game, which hit the... Um, backboard behind the ground, bounced into our striker and then went into the net, which got disallowed because it did actually go about 10 yards off the pitch. It was also um, <laughs> I mean, a moment. Fair, we, 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 we like, deserved at least one bit of refereeing to go our way um, because like that playoff running, should have we should have like finished in about third, but instead everything just went against us. Partly because we were also shit for half the season. But that um, really also matter. partly because we were massive shit houses and would completely bend every rule in the book, but I mean, that it, given that we had a player sent off and still played with seven in a cup final, yeah. <laughs> and that player sent off was a goalkeeper, meaning we didn't have a goalkeeper for the rest of the game. That was unfortunate. Um, well, I, I say it's a serious answer, Duke Stems. Uh, some of the concourse, Alf, asked, can we have Sky Sports ECL football in the media team? Uh, I'd say no to that one. Uh, Sean says that I'm like Glenn Hoddle, bad manager, bad punders. It's not that bad. Uh, who do you think was the top three managers from last season? Uh, me, Potch, um, someone else. Whoever Jez. took over Gilsey. Uh, right, oh, Jez. Jez, actually, yeah. yeah. I was going to say Jez. Taking my mm. up the vision. I mean, he it's actually got really. promoted more times than he scored goals, so fair play yeah, to the man. That's <laughs> I love you keeping that fucking joke alive. It's three months old. It's it's three months old. Oh, mate, it's going to be three years old by the time we stop using it, mate. <laughs> oh, imagine yeah. he calls another zero this season. Oh, my. He's going to have a website soon. Has Jezazu scored yet? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make a Twitter account for him. Has Jezazu scored in Division 1? No. 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 <laughs> Update it every January day make sure the world knows the answer's no. <laughs> January the 1st, 2022. Has Jezazu scored yet? No. Coronavirus uh, vaccine's been created. Has Jezusu scored? No. Vepel, most consider this is going to be the last question because someone else is typing, but they can't type because of scroll mode. Uh, most consistent player for each league? Question for everyone. Marlow, go. Probably you. Um, I mean, Division One, you'd say probably fire me or Elias, I suppose. It's going to be one of the central midfielders because all the goalkeepers and defenders are mad inconsistent. One week they'll be Franz Beckenbauer, the next week next week they'll be Tyler Blackett. So um, yeah, it's going to be one of the midfielders because I think with Fire, me and Elias, you always know what you're going to get. Uh, Division two, 
Um, are we talking last season's Division 2, yeah? Yeah. Zazug, 100%. And Division 3, probably Trito for Maylands was always there to do well. And oh, yeah. Didn't really make any mistakes all season, to be honest. He's, he's just a solid dust lad. He's, he's an all-out decent defender. You can beat him as a football manager. Too. Yeah, he is very bad at football manager. He just picks an eye outside. Right, so I suppose that's all the questions now, unless I can find one from uh, the pin messages. Well, if we if we find any good ones, we'll we'll have a think back at the end. I think I have pinned but... them actually in Potter's DMs. So yeah. Let me have a look. I should know what so I just noticed them. Hey, Captain Eagle Jr. Oh, fuck it out. This is a shit question. <laughs> <laughs> for me, for, uh, for Mass and Marlow, besides Sonning, who are your favourites to win the Premiership? <laughs> I wonder who. <laughs> is it not the team from South London? We play in red and blue. To be honest, no. I would give it Westminster. Or Gildley, to be honest. I mean, last season. Oh, last season. Oh, last, season. last season was Salford, I, I thought. So. Actually, I would yeah. say Salford would get it. The, Sol- the team Salford between. built in Division 2 the year before was really good. And if you remember back to when we actually won the ECL Cup, in case you forgot, we have mentioned it about 10 times. Um, <laughs> when we won the ECL Cup, Salford were the only team we didn't want. Like We were happy to take on South Croydon, Bromley, whoever, but we just didn't want Salford. And then when we got them, we had to get so lucky to beat them. Yeah. So the season after, like, we knew what when we play South Croydon, there's always a chance to beat them. But with Salford, we kind of always went in thinking a draw is a good result. Yeah, if we can just scratch a one 0 and then we'll be happy. Yeah, yeah. literally. Any Unfortunately, game. we only scratched a five 0 last season. I lost them three one on the first day. But... Yeah, exactly. We lost them three one on the first day, and that almost backed up what we were thinking of. This is the team that's going to win the league. Yeah. Because that, that wasn't even a bad game where we played badly. That was just self and pulling through with the Well, yeah, and then they went 2 1 up, and then we had like seven forwards, and then Shock, they scored. Yeah, nice. Like, so I'm going to check the questions channel just for any more. Yeah, we haven't had any more. But I'm going to ask who was the better manager, me or Patch? Um, I'm going to say you purely because Nuri built a lot of the Westminster squad. Mm. I just needed that confirmation. Uh, <laughs> right, our guest has been waiting very patiently, but please welcome. 28 minutes. To, yeah, <laughs> 28 minutes. We're but so please right. welcome Elias to ECL Radio. Hey, hey. Cheers, Alex. Ozzy, you've got the questions. I have got the questions. Yes. The interview. I'm going to conduct the interview, yes. So. Welcome, Elias. Thank you for waiting and not interrupting, which I was really surprised by. Um, so, starting all our starting all our visitors off this year, we're going to go with an ECL three. So, what is your best, your worst, and your funniest moments in ECL? Um, best has got to be probably the season three final um, game week when we won the league and I scored the hat trick to secure FC Victoria there. Um, there was it. Third or second title? I'm not sure. I don't, rem- I don't remember correctly. But um, Cle- clearly, a great moment that you remember really well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. but um, that would probably be my be- best moment yeah. that I can remember. Um, worst moment: uh, every um, ECR Cup round one loss. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you know, can you can you remember how many that is? <laughs> um. I, I can't remember the exact amount, but I think the worst has got to be um, our round one loss to Gate Athletic. Yeah. Uh, because I was managing Gate Athletic the season before, and uh, I won the league with them. Then I decided to, you know, give it, give it to Morgan and go back to SCFC and play for them. And uh, then Gate Athletic knocked us out in the cup. Yeah, I, I imagine. Was... Not your best. No. And then your yeah. funniest ECL moment. Funniest ECL moment? Uh the night that the um, Ikari Officer P Force, um, who was there? <laughs> um, yeah, but, but basically, all, all the Gaza boys got banned, and then uh, who is it? Officer P Force um, tried to pretend that his dad came into the ECL chat and tried to slew us everyone off. That was the funniest. Like I stayed up, I literally I stayed up to four a.m. my time, like watching and laughing at the VC. No, not VC, the um, text chat. Sorry. Yeah. 
I mean, I, I think they're the sort of people who just keep entertaining ECL because you think they're done and they come back and do something more stupid. Yeah. Um, like keeping you up till 4am. So what we're going to go through now is those are your ECL3. Just talk us through what your history has been in ECL. So when you joined, how you joined, and then your history through up till now, really. Um, yeah, I joined in season one. Well, I I didn't like play play a lot of games in season one. I can't remember because my computer was kind of shit. But I was like, I was in the Skype chat with all the boys. Uh, I got an invite from was it Alfie or Dino? I got to know Alfie from um Reefer Toronto from like a half a year before ECL started or a year before ECL started, and I. Uh, yeah, I became very good friends with Alfie, and I'm still I, I think I'm very good friends with him still. Um, but yeah, and um, then we kind of you know dominated the first five seasons uh, up until up until we rebranded to South Croydon, and then we started losing like everything. No, yeah. we, we only have one league league title in as a CFC, and that's kind of sad. Do you, do you think that that's what started causing you to lose in cut first rounds, that rebrand? Yeah, I think that's it. If we stayed as FC Victoria, we would have won. Yeah, you've, you've, you've just embodied Crystal Palace a bit too much of that. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. But... I mean, it's uh, like every every time there's been a green team in ECL, not Cannes, North Preston, but every time uh, there's been a green team in ECL... <laughs> When I managed them at least, and then when um, FC Victoria dominated his first five yeah. seasons, obviously didn't make a difference to Sunning last year, but you know, <laughs> um, you can't do that. So, in your personal records trophy cabinet, say for ECL, what have you got? Because you've obviously got the first five league titles, you've got one since, but is that it? No, there's um the. There's a Division Two title with Gate Athletic that I won as a manager slash um, senior. Yeah. There's um, there's the Mickey Mouse trophies. Um, there's a couple of cups with FC Victoria, and uh, then personal achievements. I think there's a couple of player of the seasons and uh, yeah, team it's, it's yeah the... a lot of a lot of team of the seasons as well. Yeah, e- easy to forget. Obviously, you just so yeah, many. yeah. Okay, so that's your sort of personal history in ECL and what you've done as a manager. Um, one for sort of everyone who's played. Who are the top players? So the top three you've played with uh, at South Croydon and, and Victoria and obviously Gade. And then the top three players to ever play against. The top three players that I've played with. Um, well, uh, it's, it's going to be, it's gonna be um, the top two players you are, you're all going to expect. Um, I'm gonna. I'm not gonna give it in any particular order, but the um. I'm gonna start off with Dino and Harry, hands mm-hmm. down. Like hands down, like one of the two of the best players ECL has probably seen. Like that was the uh, best partnership in the earlier seasons, and uh, yeah, I was quite sad when Harry left ECL and uh, Dino started having internet problems. Mm. Yeah, I, 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 I hope that um, Dino gets his internet fixed or. Yeah, I can can get back to uni as soon as possible yeah. so I can play more with him. Yeah, I mean, yeah. is it? I, I don't think that's the only thing that Dino needs to fix, though, is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, then the third best player. Uh, I don't know. Um, that's actually a tough one. I, I haven't thought of it. Um, well, have a think. I'm actually. I'm. I'm. I'm, I'm kind of. I'm gonna say as a tie, it's gonna be between Josh and Mick, probably. Yeah. Um, I can't. I can't decide which one. I mean, they're, they're, the they're both. The they're both so good. Yeah. They're the same person from slightly different places. It's fine. <laughs> um, yeah. And then your top three to play against: hardest, best, whatever you want to sort of criteria. Ah, uh, well, first one's got to be Malcolm. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he was annoying to come up against. Like I mean, I'm gonna say that right now. He was annoying to come up against. We had some rivalry with our team and his team. Obviously, the managers not not very fond of each other as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but then the other two. Uh, I know, I know, he's been slated like 
earlier in this show already, but I'm gonna say Rizento. Like earlier Rizento, not not this current Rizento. Yeah. Um he was a pain in the ass to come up against as well. He was a he was good at playing. He he had the IQ, he can pass, dribble, um, and shoot. Mm. And uh <laughs> another pain in the ass to come up against Emiliano Sala. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> like <laughs> every time he got the ball he would shoot. Um <laughs> and he would usually go in as well. Uh that was that was super annoying. And um we basically had the game plan every every time we played it up against him, but yeah, okay. it's just every time the GK would just sell. Hmm. So it's, it's a sad life. Like in twelve three. <laughs> Cheers, Marlo. Uh, go uh, I'm crying now. Yeah. Um, so this is the history. So this year at ECL, uh, once the season starts, TM soon. Whenever Alf and Dino fix tools. <laughs> fix tools. Twenty twenty one. Yeah. Uh, it's getting pushed back more than the Euros. Um, but. What are you going to see from yourself? Because obviously you're managing again this season, aren't you? Or coaching? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm I'm a joint manager with Marlo and Matthew at um, Lock United doing D two. Yeah. Uh, I don't I don't want to say anything like that. That's going to get clipped because <laughs> yeah. But I think we're going to do good. Uh, I've I I've seen our team. I know what our team can do, and uh, I'm fully confident on. Uh, I was doing good in D2 do, this year. Do you see yourself going up uh, via the playoffs or going straight up as promotion, as people said Locke probably should have done for a while? <laughs> uh, um, you know what? I'm going to say we're going to go through like, yeah. without the playoffs. Without the playoffs? Okay. So yeah. Obviously, big words that are now going to be clipped. And I personally, as a, as a player, how do you see your season um, going? What do you think is going to happen in the Premiership? Uh, you know what? Um, Guilty have a good team. Guilty have a good team. Then Westminster have a decent team. Um, I haven't seen Salford, but last I heard from them, they had a good team as well. I don't know. Uh, South Gordon is probably going to win the league. Probably. But, uh, yeah, let's just hope that it's entertaining at least. Yeah. I mean... South Korean were probably going to win the league until a certain result that Marlowe has probably over mentioned. 12 3. 12 3 last season. We ate um, something. <laughs> so, obviously, because I think. I, I think Henry Chesco one... treat. <clears throat> what? <laughs> um, oh, mate, that's nine less than us as a team. <laughs> Cause th- I think, think obviously that Sonning result comes to mind. Obviously, South Croydon probably on a da- on their day were the best team last season. But when you drop apart players, from that you, day, apart yeah, we played a team. fucking team full of incels. <laughs> our, <laughs> our actual defenders have fucking personal lives as well. <laughs> but oh, is, 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 is that one where you think that South Croydon last year's drop off from their first? Yeah, to yeah, else? our players got too caught in their personal life, like. Bitch, if you can't fucking prioritize ECL over personal life, especially on Valentine's Day, then yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 th- I think you're completely beta right. males. Yeah, because yeah. they're both um, from Western England. Leave them alone. Yeah, <laughs> but obviously, I mean, I think we've sort of covered it as now. But our other thing we're going to be asking our early season guests is, who do you think are going to win the leagues and the cups this season? So obviously, you think South Croydon and Lock. For Div One, Div Two, uh, does anyone jump out at you for Div Three? Um, to be honest, I don't follow a lot of C Three. I kind of lost motivation um, to watch <laughs> it because of certain people. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. From what I heard, Harlick and Halewood were supposed to be good, so it's going to be a battle between them two. Yeah, I mean, I think obviously a lot of people are saying that at the moment, so we'll we'll wait and see. Um, and for the cups, do you, do you see anything different happening for uh, Croydon this year? Uh, I think I think I think Croydon's still gonna go out in round one. We're gonna probably find a way to go out to some team from Division Three. Out in round one to Haywood. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're, we're gonna we're gonna probably play someone like Ardamiang up top. I'm sorry, <laughs> twenty hat tricks and South Croydon out of the first round. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna find a way to fuck it up somehow. I guarantee you that. 
Yeah. So obviously, you're anyone but Croydon to win the cup is your. Yeah, I, it just depends on the um the draws as well. Like if there's a if there's a, like a very good game like straight in the second round, it, it might change the entire thing up. Like if if there's a game between like Guildley and Salford in the second round, that might yeah. be kind of interesting. Yeah, very, very true. And obviously the trophy. Um, are, are, do you expect uh, Locke to do a double this season? Um, <laughs> uh, I don't know. Probably. Is, is it a wait and see whether you even have the players to who's going to turn up for the trophy? Because obviously, I know yeah, we just have the, we just have to see. Um, we have a player currently in jail at the moment, and we just have to see what his final verdict is. Is he allowed yeah. back into the country or? Yes, um, it, it, I suppose it all depends who's running immigration these days. Yeah, free up the Gaza. Um, free, Gang free shit, up, boy. Yeah, um, and obviously I was going to ask you if you got any passing comment, uh, but obviously your, your final words are free up the Gaza. So, Elias, thank you very much for coming on ECL Radio. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, she's gone back on mute now, so we're going to carry on with the rest of the show <laughs> without Elias. Pots definitely played the jingle then. Uh, so we'll have a look back at that on this year later. That was absolutely fantastic. Uh, I am going to have a look at what was in the next. We're going through the league tables. We are going to go through the Premiership table. Uh, Marlo, how was Sonning season? Uh, well, I believe Sonning won the league, despite being predicted to get relegated, with the most notable games being a, 12, <coughs> a 12-3 win against South Croydon, as Aussie's dog is going mental, um, and a 5-0 win against Salford. Uh, so yeah, Sonic season went well. I just apologise for my dog. He just gets a bit yeah. excited when the it's ECL fine. Premiership. We all like dogs. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> he's he's a just ECL radio. He's Ning born and bred. <laughs> he didn't go through as much well, as we well, did. He actually yeah. is from around Reading, but you know. Fair enough. Oh, sorry, sorry for just derailing. Uh, good the, dog. Uh, <laughs> league table talk. Good boy. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna go some one more for South Korea. Hmm. What, uh, what was South Korea's in season? Um, I was playing for some of the games in the North Palace of Life just took me away from the majority of it. But it is an alright season. We played some decent football. Uh, it's more of a learning curve because it's a different style for me. But sadly, you couldn't uh, quite overcome the mighty Ning. <laughs> um, well, we still beat you in the other game, so... <laughs> I didn't win yeah. the league there, did you? <laughs> no, we didn't have autos to help us. Yes, you did. <laughs> well, not as many as you. Half oh, we've three, I think. Half the season, yeah. <laughs> Half the season of all those. No, actually, four of our wins were normal wins. Three of them were also. <laughs> so most of our wins were. <laughs> <laughs> so almost. Oh. Uh, so, for what happens to little old so? Uh, Aussie. Did you, did you say my, what? What happened? I just cut yeah. Out. What happens to Salford? No, that was not, not cutting out, do I? Oh, I blame Matt. I mean, yeah. I don't really know. I, I didn't have as much interest in Salford. They're just sort of one of those teams. They passed me by a bit um, last season because they were just there doing their best, but not quite making it. We, we talk about that. Um, when we talk about Malcolm, we see that season last year and you compare it to... Um, Better to the league winning season, just not up to that standard of constant consistency with top policy names that you recognise straight away. Mm. Well, that's that's what I mean by sort of passing you by. Is that, that like it, you could you could say it about obviously Sunning and South Croydon and goal difference deciding it, but they sort of and autos or whatever you want to make of it. <laughs> but they they both tried to seize a season where Salford like even, you you look at them and go they finished three points back from Sunning and South Croydon, but you wouldn't have thought it. Like, no, you would have thought they would win. Yeah, you, you thought they were near the relegations, like, given the way that they just didn't make any sort of... Because even, even looking at the... I, I, when we looked back at the table to discuss it, I went, actually, I didn't realise how close they were. <laughs> but... Three points off isn't bad. Exactly, that's, that's what I mean. But you would never have expected it, because they weren't involved in the race for it, because it was sunny in South Croydon. I suppose so. Uh, we're going to move on to girls who they will really push for relegation. <laughs> that they pushed towards the end of the season. Uh, 
got them. Obviously, there's allegations on above the the inactive plan. We will speak about that in a second. But um, it was just not a good season for Gilsley until the very end when Benedict popped up and started scoring all these mad goals with a few teammates coming in thanks to Nori. But not as many as he said he did. No, not as many as he said. Considering he said he he scored more than Gildley. (laughs) He went to the... He went to Sussex just mid-season. That's why they only got one win. Uh, yeah, you want to move on to Bromley, Margo? You can talk about Bromley. Right, well, um, Bromley didn't actually turn up to any games. I think they only turned up like four in the end, um, of which they lost to us thanks to a, a wonderful goal from yours truly in the 82nd minute. Um, and I don't even know who, who else they played. Oh, yeah, they played the uh, South Croydon game at the end to um, win Sonning the league when they only lost by one goal, went to win South Croydon in the league, who'd have to lose by 12. So uh, we appreciate that. Um, yeah, and I'm sure they'll probably end up winning the National League at the end of this season now. I'm, so, I'm sure the squad this season is better than it was last season, which is strange, to be yeah. honest. Cause got... I mean... Having salary is going to help them massively. I mean, Araya said earlier how he's one of the toughest players you can play against because there's no game plan that works purely because he is well and truly like Alexander Arnold's dream of crossing and show up. Um, so, you know, <laughs> there's not a lot you can do to stop him. And I think that's going to be a problem for any Division 2 side. One boy, you used to own Sussex. What do you think of their season? Uh... They, they went a bit quiet, but scored six goals. Got one win. I think it was an also. <laughs> so it's a bit yeah. static, really, it's, isn't it? Was it a bit shit when obviously when I made the club? I thought, oh yeah, it's going to run well. Signed majority of decent players, and it just turned all against me. So <laughs> that's what I was I just thought, fuck it, throw it in. Let someone else deal with the shit. But yeah, I still yeah. followed them two games. That was actually the most forgettable results of the season somehow. It was Sussex 4, South Croydon 1. Yeah. That was their only win. Up that one. So I literally that. never knew that game happened. But yeah, okay. neither did I. <laughs> What's going on, me? So I, I, I mean, forgot. given that you just said it, you thought it was an auto win, and it wasn't, it, I think it tells you how forgettable. Yeah. <laughs> I, I thought it was like an auto win over Bromley or something. <laughs> It turns out it wasn't. Uh, let's move on to the National League. Westminster, brilliant season. 30 points, perfect record. Uh, goal difference of 52. That is absolutely ridiculous for the league. That competitive. Um, that's just a Div 1 side playing and Div 2 for a laugh. Uh, after failing to get promoted for two seasons. I mean, to you be, bottling the playoffs year after year. I mean, to be fair, you, you, you do say it, though, it's about... Um, the, the, I mean, the top two in the National were miles better than... Obviously the rest of us um, even though we made the late playoff push at lock like Westminster battered everyone and then you've got them who were were with D1 effectively in D2 uh, Birmingham again similar like if the only team that's beaten you Westminster you know that sort of thing's telling you what the quality of those two at the top was which I think makes Locke's playoff run even better given that <laughs> we probably shouldn't have even been involved like that with a team like Birmingham, because they were a D1 side in D2. We'll see how they go. Was I like actually? Let's talk about Birmingham. Uh, went off up through the playoffs. I think they probably would have won if they didn't have that fucking dodgy keeper. Uh, <laughs> anyway, but uh, Wolf played completely out of the skin. Not not really a good squad, uh, especially with the goalkeeper. But. Um, we we talk about the playoff final and and you see um you see the the three playoff final where they complete underdogs against Marlborough and then you see the signings that he made uh, before they came into the national league and then they got twenty four points they only lost two games against Westminster so it proves that there's a definitely well, a separate level between the two that went up and the rest of the three, league. But... well yeah but we the, but I that's mean... that's easy yeah. <laughs> It's not just easy, I was football. Yeah. But yeah. The National League wasn't really that competitive. There was Westminster and Birmingham turned up for the entire season. Locke turned up for about four games of the season, and then everyone else was just everyone else. Mm. 
Although, I mean, Maidenhead, again, were like us, four games, four wins, lost in six, so... Well, yeah, I think they won the two against Paddington and won the two... Actually, no, they beat Locke once under the greatest manager, arguably in ECL history, Massig. Um, I mean, I, I just would take a moment to step aside and discuss Massig as somehow involved in Locke being where they were both at the middle and the end of the season, which was amazing because he did have, despite his finishing being awful, did have a great run and run in the playoffs. Uh but yeah, like, I think that middle two again uh, just didn't turn up enough. Locke, obviously, <laughs> um, yeah, having to have Marlow rescue them, Aladici style. Is everyone just shut up? Yeah. Cheers, yeah. everyone. I think everyone's <laughs> just shut up for you. Amazing uh, <laughs> lad, then. They have two of them wins against Paddles, and I think Marlow said. Uh, it's an awful goal difference, a minus 32. That is worse than Paddington. That's not what He's 24 think... worse than the team that finished one place below them, so that's gone well. <laughs> He's just gone on there. And did he lose like fucking 20 nil or something? Uh, let's have a look. They got battered 13 1. They got battered by us at the end as well, I think, at one point. Let me see. Was it like 8 nil or something? We beat them in like, yeah, yeah, the we, last we, game weeks. We we them. turned around the goal difference massively because we were oh, like yeah. minus 16, they were like minus yeah. 20 at that point. They got these yeah. 11 0 by Birmingham, 8 0 by Loch, 9 0 by Westminster. And you've signed their striker at Westminster in Division 1, so good luck. <laughs> I haven't signed him. I haven't signed him. What else is there? I'll be 4 7, uh, 1 5 3. Yeah, I think we've got the most 13-1. inconsistent team in ECL. Lost 13 1 and lost 3 0 to Paddington. Probably I don't know how you lose to Paddington. Yeah, it was probably forfeit. But I don't know how you lose to Paddington. Well, um, uh, let's speaking of... Ask him a siege. <coughs> um, RB Lach. Well, not RB Lach. Lach United. <laughs> Who wants to talk about them? I mean, uh, there's, there's, I think we've covered so enough, to, say, to be yeah. honest. Yeah, like, we've already yeah. talked about the playoffs and now the season's gone, so I think we can move on from there. Marlo uh, won't move on, given that he still moans at me about having to change the rules but to avoid... Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, but... <laughs> that's, yes, that's okay. Hopefully the, that sort of situation is avoided this season, touch wood, you know, uh, and that's why we've changed it all. But we'll move... Relegation sides, yeah. Paddington really Wanderers, yeah. yeah. Paddington, dead. Worst uh, team I've ever seen in ECL Division 2. Probably, yeah. Actually, no, ours, not our Sussex season Preston 6 side. <laughs> no, our Sussex season 6 side is worse, actually. <laughs> that That's time a... when me and you just passed around the back for about 20 minutes, Ryan Jinx screaming at us in the voice chat, just for us to blast it into the top corner of our own net. <laughs> <laughs> what an unreal team. <laughs> the mighty pink Trabant, literally defending nothing in season. <laughs> I think we got one win and it was an all so that we got like from the last minute because one of our players... And we would have won one of the games as well because we, when I joined we were 6-1 down and then I scored like two and we were 6-4 <laughs> yeah. and then I got myself sent off at half time to stop the comeback. I remember that was my first game with Gilfie Siggers and V2 when I got an assist from the set piece as the first thing I did. <laughs> hmm. Absolutely unreal. Uh, North Price and Dead. They were really good to be fair, they just died. D- they had a very good squad, I don't know why they all left. I don't know. Cause, cause, uh, one of them they went to a different back. league, I think. I think they all joined like NPS or something. Uh, uh, but Joseph Starlin's now back and plays for Guildley, so that'd be fun. I mean, that's that's the exact that's the most ECL statement of all time. Like Joseph <laughs> Starlin's back. And <laughs> 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 back from beyond the grave, you know. Joseph Starlin's <laughs> back. He's playing for Guildley. <laughs> Um, and he's coming to tear up the Premiership. <laughs> Tearing up the Molotov Ribbon for Pack and the Premiership, <laughs> yes. Um, and obviously, the, 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 <laughs> before I break out, let's go with the local <laughs> league. Um, Maidens. Maidens. Good season. Uh, Wombles, do you want to talk about them? Even though you didn't watch Gold Cup because it's shit. You mean the Womble who just said he's gone for dinner? Yeah, the Womble who's gone for dinner, yeah. He's gone for dinner. Yeah. Shit. Yeah. Uh, Margot, would you like to talk about the Maitland? 
Uh, I think Elias would like to talk about it as our honourable guest. Yeah, let's, let's bring Elias. Hey, 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 can I get a round of applause? I'm no. back, baby. No. <laughs> okay, so what was the question? <laughs> you were meant to be listening. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're now discussing the local league table and the teams. Ah, um, uh, so I at the wrong time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, um, I'll cover it then. <laughs> right, we'll, then... we'll do a run through because I feel like the div three. Yeah, um, I think we should summarise Division 3 as a whole, because yeah. none of us really know enough about any one team. Yeah. Joseph Stalin is back. <laughs> oh, so is one ball now, actually. Okay, I'm going to sub off. See you. Okay, you are. So, uh, Division 3, then. Maylands won it, uh, to, right. ahead of East Riding by one point. So that was a very close type to race, but then, realistically, they only actually dropped points against each other and, one, and Eastbrook, so... Mm. <clears throat> I'm not sure how much you can say about that. But, oh, um... Yeah. Wumble's back yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, have you got anything really to add about Div 3 Wumble? Um, no, I don't really watch it. This shit. <laughs> yeah. I, I watched mean, it, it a bit. It would have been yeah. loads more interesting if Halewood or Eastbrook had a couple less points so that Marlborough's end of season push actually meant something. Mm. Yeah, it's but it just meant to take off fifth. Yeah. I wouldn't say that. I mean, I'd be fair. Some of the Division 3 sides could probably beat a lot of, a couple of the national sides. For example, I would very much rate Marlborough, Eastbrook, Maylands, or East Riding last season's chances against Maidenhead, who ended up third mm. in Division 2. So, I mean, it wasn't completely awful. <laughs> I, to be fair, I don't, think, I don't think it was a very good year for the quality of the national. Because um, no, obviously, it wasn't. the fact that. Like, it was two other, teams and then locked yeah. up eventually. Exactly. Whereas, yeah. like, you sort of look at it and go. The local because a couple of teams turned up late, but they're still quality yeah. for that level. But, but you have an established top yeah. four. Yeah, eh. I mean, I mean, I think it'll be inter- what, it, there's going to be a lot more interest in this year because I'll, I'll be interested how a lot of the D three teams adapt to being able to because they're obviously going to be allowed to play more players than with the new tool. So. And also, ECL is a much bigger league, so the players who are not good <clears> enough for Division Two is a higher quality than it was last season. Yeah. People and obviously, a couple of the local players, like you see them and you're thinking they could easily do a job in the National League, but, well, no, there's really not that many, actually, but, like, they're <laughs> players who, um, you know, absolutely are not as bad as some of last season's players, let's say, like, you think back to the padding team, they would lose to every single one of the Division 3 teams this season, so, you know, it <laughs> proved a lot, and I'm not getting DMs, Philip name. Yeah. Yeah, so, mate, um, like, we're going to... And the other thing, but before we do go, is what's over the next ten game weeks? We are going to be doing more these radio shows. We'll have a guest every week, guest interview, like we've done today with Elias. I think he's going to be doing all of them. Oh, uh, we'll have similar chats to what we've had today. It's been very good. Um, we might even turn this into commentary for like the three games, and someone can stream it, I suppose. Just radio commentary, like fucking BBC Radio Berkshire. Hello, welcome <laughs> to the Mad Start. <laughs> Yeah. Me, Mick Gooding. Yeah. Fucking hell. Uh, they're, they're all on fucking iFollow, though. <laughs> and then they commentate and make a radio game. And it's a free kick on the right side of the box, 20 yards. <laughs> oh, man, I've actually forgotten the name of the bloke who does the... Mi- oh, he's really miserable. I need to look him up. Hang on. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, it's like trying to commentate on like ECL is going to be great. And it's like, oh, yeah, he's just queued a man from 20 yards, jump no. tackle. Make good things keep saying we're shit on our own I follow. He needs to stop. <laughs> we're 3-0 down to Wigan and he's fucking abusing every single player on the pitch. Like, yeah, we get it, we're bad. We're 3-0 down to one of the worst sides in England. Yeah. So, we're going to end with a big thank you to our guest today, Elias. A big thank you to Poch for streaming the, uh, on YouTube. We've had quite a few viewers, I think. Especially mm, three the guys up. <laughs> yeah, three of the guys. Yeah. Uh, this is from me, Ozzy, Colombo, and Marlow. And Shara. Happy Ramadan. Oh, wait, is Ramadan over? No, uh, it was the other day, wasn't it? Is it? Oh, cultural, right. sens- cultural sensitivity training is next on the agenda. <gasps> oh, Ramadan <laughs> ends in three days. Well, it's not over yet, then. No, it's they not. They think it's yeah. all over. <laughs>